This is the R Zen Post of the Week podcast, unedited and unrefined, now with lighting effects. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I I connected a lamp. That's that's really that, I, I, yeah. Um, uh, where we talk about a Zen Reddit post of practical or academic interest. Um, but Astro has said he doesn't want to do that anymore, and since he's the only regular, <laughs> um. He'd like to go through uh, the gateless checkpoint um, a case at a time and see what happens. And so because it's my favorite, I guess we'll do that. Uh, I guess he'll start off by reading it and then we'll throw rotten fruit at him. <laughs> OK, so uh, I have I have a couple of, of points to uh, to talk about. Uh... <sighs> I have a couple of points to talk about before before we do that because I have two things to say first. Um, so the first is uh, it's really interesting. I uh, I, I had skimmed uh, the the DT Suzuki's book Zen Doctrine of No Mind, and I forgot how different it is. Like it's really obvious when you're reading that book that he's not doing what as a, a Zen instructional book is doing, right? He sort of goes to the history of uh, what he knows uh, from the Zen tradition. You know, it's uh, there's a lot of guessing uh, when, when he's doing it. And the reason I the reason I bring that up is because I was thinking about what uh, a project like this one was going to look like because what I was thinking was well there's no uh, educational content for the Zen tradition on YouTube and you know we don't have the highest production budget or anything like that uh, we don't have <laughs> the fact that you would uh, refer to this as a production budget <laughs> we don't have a production value <laughs> <laughs> um we, we don't have any you know fancy titles or certification uh from uh, a church or an institution or anything like that but i i was looking through what youtube has to offer when it comes to you know uh, zen and uh, case study and things like that and it's really not like it, it has nothing it really has nothing uh, it has a couple of uh, interviews of some uh, religious person or other. Uh, and mostly what they say is, uh, you know, they talk about cases and all of the cases get dismissed as this uh, impossible thing to comprehend, which really like it, it, uh, it doesn't uh, bring any value uh, as far as, you know, uh, education is concerned in terms of culture, history, whatever. But it, I think it also act. It's actively dangerous, or I mean, it's it's actually it's actually it's actively hurting um, people's attempt to, attempts to get educate educated on it and trying to have a well, conversation I, because I think that's the point, though. I mean, they're coming at this from a religion that wants to treat zen as a form of literature so they really i mean it's in their interests to do all the things that you just said on purpose <laughs> okay so that's 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 uh that's fair um so that's kind of that's kind of why what i wanted to to do this project and the second the second point i i have to mention before we start is um there's a lot of translations of this book uh, the ones I have uh, ready and available to, uh, for us to use right now are um, Wonder Wheels and Blights. Uh, if you have any other you would like to bring into the discussion, I I, I think I, I think I have most of them. So you know we can we can talk about those. Um, I I like Wonder Wheels because it's just a website, so you know anyone can access it. Um, and yeah, if that's Oh, fine. I think we can start with the preface. All right. Why don't, so, why don't you do that? I'm going to go get the one that you don't have. But <laughs> we'll see that because you'll be talking and your face will be on the screen. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So this is a preface for the gateless checkpoint of the Zen lineage. And this is wonderful Wonder Wheel's rendition. He says, the heart mind governs the Buddha's words. The gateless governs the lineage. Since the gate of the Dharma is gateless, just how do you pass through a life? How do you not see the way? Things that enter through the gate are not the family treasures. Things that are obtained in the beginning through conditions become destroyed in the end. Doesn't a big speech like this seem to raise waves without a wind, to gouge a wound in good flesh? Trying to solve the problem by such cold water stagnant words is comparable to shaking a stick to hit the moon. The boot stands between a niche and a scratch. To be happy mixed with and for the stream. I, Huikai, in the summer of the year of the first earthly branch of the fifth heavenly stem in the, in the era of Chowding, that's the year 12, 1228, uh, was head of the assembly at Longxian in Dongye. Because I received questions to benefit others, I proceeded to go to the ancients' public cases to make tiles to knock on their gates and, by following the opportunities, to guide these learned persons. This was concluded and the record was trans transcribed. It became assembled unconsciously. The first is not according to any express front to back order. The 48 stands, sorry, the 48 standards became a collection to pass through called the gateless checkpoint. Indeed, it is a man not minding danger. Uh, indeed, it is a man not minding danger or dying who goes straight to the point and is not delayed by eight armed ne neja. Even if the western heavens, four sevens, and the eastern earth's two trees come to visit on the wind, they are only able to beg for their lives. If perhaps you vacillate, you might as well be looking at a veiled window as someone rides a horse by. When you are able to move away the obstruction and your eye returns, the horse has passed by long ago. And then he has an instructional verse. And it says, The great way is gateless, yet it has a thousand different paths. Able to pass through this checkpoint, you stride alone through heaven and earth. Okay, so um, I think one very cool thing that uh, I would like to say and that you've mentioned a lot of times is that the title is a pun. Everybody, everybody likes puns, or maybe not pun, but it's it's a double. Uh, it's a game. It's a game on words. Right, double um, entendre. It has two meanings. Right. So the title uh, in Chinese it's pronounced "woman one." I mean, it's not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not actually sure if it's pronounced that way, actually. Uh, but it's a woman one in Chinese. And it's a title, it's a, uh, it's referring to both uh, what Wonder Wheel said, which is the gateless checkpoint of the Zen lineage. But it's also referring to the guy who wrote it because his name was woman. So it's, uh, it's also uh, not only the gateless checkpoint, but also woman's checkpoint because his name is gateless right um so that's something to think about or i don't know uh okay which book do, do you have for us would you like and to he's, it's if it's if it's woman's checkpoint that means he's the one guarding the checkpoint he's keeping the gate as it were so there is a veiled threat in the title right that you aren't going to get past me I, woman, will stop you at the checkpoint. And I, I think that, that that will get, that will be way more clear once we start reading cases. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I mean, let's just jump right into it, right? Because what, the first one is probably one of the most famous you ones. Know what? Um, this is, but this this is this should be the preface episode. This is the preface. You can mind this preface for forty million years. What are you talking about? You 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 weren't here while I read it. I. <laughs> okay, let's stick with the preface. Okay, so I have my my, my uh, so I'm gonna uh, 
my personal thing is I'm going to do, I've committed to starting a 10 year project. I got a new computer for the project. I learned a new operating system for that computer. Um, and the project is I'm going to annotate and edit and correct Blythe's book that's a translation and annotation of this book. And um, the three translations I'm going to be depending on the most are Blythe's, J.C. Cleary's, and Paul Rep's. And I'm going to slide in uh, T. Cleary's translation and a little bit of the religious translations by, uh, I guess his name is Sasaki and another one by Yamada. Those are like the sort of counterpoints, maybe. Um, so uh, just looking at the translation by uh, JC, the preface starts off with fighting words. There's just no way else to describe it. He's just going to punch the audience right in the face. For the Buddha's words, mind is the source. The gate of nothingness is the gate to truth. Like, that's such a combative opening that I'm, I'm enchanted, right? Because like, everybody's his enemy now, like everybody, uh, except, of course, other Zen masters. But mind is the source is, seems like an argument about the sutras, right? The, the wisdom is not coming from the words. It's not coming from a supernatural source. Buddha's just giving you a piece of his mind, and that's the only origin of it, right? And then the gate of nothingness is the gate of truth is, uh, you know, a reference in some ways to Bodhidharma saying that the highest of the holy truths is emptiness, and there's nothing holy in it. So in terms of first sentences, it's right up there. Um. And then he, you know, does this wonderful thing where he asks these questions. He just loves to do this. Since it's the gate of nothingness, how can we pass through it? <laughs> I, I think, uh, wait, wait, I'm, I'm having a little bit of an issue with my earphones. Give me one second. Yeah, it's just the high production values. They're really showing now. Oh, look at that. He's got multiple pieces of equipment. I have this one microphone. That's the only equipment I have. Yeah. And this lamp. I knew, I think that should be counted as a production value now. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. There we go. Sorry. I wanted uh, to have... Not this, but it doesn't work. So let's go. Okay. So I said, uh, since it's the gate of nothingness, how can you enter? I, I think uh, what catches uh, my attention instantly, because I think this is a, a pretty huge deal that I, I don't want um, to, uh, to, to just gloss over. Um, that is one of the key differences that I see in the Zen tradition as opposed to basically anything else is that the authority that uh, the, the claims of authority are not connected to a certain text, right? Like in the in the in Christianity, the Bible is the is the is the authority, right? And the authority that people have is connected to that book, right? Like if the Pope says um, anything, you know, he has this supernatural power of uh, I, I don't remember what it's called uh, the, the thing where he can't be wrong when reading scripture. Basically, his interpret his interpretation is right. Yeah, uh, his interpretation of the book is the right thing. The, always right just by by default by virtue of him being the pope but 
that's only possible because there is a book, right? Um, and in this case, I think what women in part is very clearly saying at the start is the authority of the, the Zen lineage does not come from a certain text or a book. The authority comes from, how, how, how did you say it? I, I like the way you said mind it. Mind uh, is the but, source. Yeah. He's given you a piece of his mind. <laughs> and the other thing that's interesting is he's not saying that Buddha's mind is the source. He's saying mind is the source, which is exactly what Mazu said hundreds of years earlier. Mind is Buddha. So, yes, it's not from a book. It's not from supernatural wisdom. It's not from having an important insight that nobody else has had. It's not from figuring out a truth that other people haven't figured out yet. It's not from problem solving. Mind is the source. Then he goes and on. I, and you, just to, uh, so, and I think that that puts it in a really interesting position because of what you also said about how uh, woman is the one guarding this checkpoint or uh, that it's woman's checkpoint because that means that what he's looking for for people to pass through his checkpoint is not going to come from a you know divine revelation or a particular obscure sutra that he's trying to uh, get you to show him uh <laughs> don't, don't do that um uh it, it doesn't come from, from things like that right the the passport that he's checking is uh your mind right and he's looking to see if you have the uh, mind seal or i mean that's a i i don't like speaking in, in those terms because it makes it sound a little bit uh supernatural but I, it's it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to talk about it in other terms because it's just a really great an analogy right of how of how it works it, either people have this thing in their in their <laughs> Production it, value. It's production value. Either people have the mark, the marking um, in in their in the way they use or they show uh, their minds, or they don't. And it's not something that uh, they can get from uh, anywhere else, right? Like you can't show, I don't know, a driver's license. You you pass the test for or something like that it's just it's, just, it's your passport from where i guess the analogy is breaking up a little bit but yeah uh, what i'm getting at is he's checking your mind it's, it's what i'm trying to to say so the encounter is not going to be through something else it's a direct encounter that you're going to have with women well the he says in the next sentence, I mean, in the next sentence, he says it doesn't come in through the gate, right? And uh, he's, right. he's making the same point that you're making, which is that this is a conversation about something that is intrinsically already yours. And that that's going to be the huge debate, right? Is it already yours or not? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are going to say it's not already yours. And that's what's going to differentiate Zen from Buddhism. I think the, the other argument I see people half making is that by doing practices that you got uh, from outside of you, that uh, you are getting to know what's inside of you or something like that, which is kind of what they try to say with things like meditation, right? That... Um, even if you, obviously, nobody has uh, learned medit uh, meditation practice from themselves. They're always getting it from somebody else. And I think the argument there, if they could uh, verbalize it, would be something like uh, you're using it to find out what's already inside of you. But it's self-defeating, right? Because um, if you're using it like if you're trying to get the passport by using something that you got from outside of the gate which is this all of these practices that people like to have then it's already over right you got it from somewhere else and no 
it doesn't matter how much you like it or how much you think it's like a a, a natural thing that people do you learned it from somebody from somebody from somewhere else and there's not much you can do to get around that he also says this other thing that i didn't really pay attention to before but just now I I was thinking, hmm, maybe I can do something with that. He says, um, in the summer of 1228, he's the head of the congregation. People ask him for instruction, blah, 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 blah. He guided students according to their potential and the potentials of the moment. I mean, what if, what if the 48 cases are for 48 different potentials? I think that would I I I don't I think that would be a big claim because what what that would imply would be well no okay no no okay I I was going to say that that that, that would seem to imply to me that uh you know there's he's dividing people into forty eight kinds and he's saying you're in there somewhere but no I mean he's not <laughs> he's not saying it's a comprehensive list. Um, but, so. yeah, he, what he, the other thing that's in this, this paragraph, that's really remarkable or noteworthy for some audiences is his remarks were copied on the spur of the moment and made <laughs> into the collection, right? He did not put his best effort into this, right? He just like wrote this as a nasty letter to the power company about the fact that he had been overcharged. Boom. And it's out the window. Right. I mean, the um, so when people come along and famous people have come along and said, this book doesn't make any sense. Um, if they can't make some sense out of it and this is just like what he came up with in 10 minutes, then it's pretty likely that they're not going to understand the more complicated constructions like Blue Cliff Record and, and Book of Serenity. Like, that's one of the possible problems there, right? He's, this is his casual conversation. Right? <laughs> that's what the preface says anyway, right? I, I guess I believe that for the commentary, but I don't believe that for the verses, right? Unless, like, is he really I, such they're a not genius? not that good. <laughs> <laughs> like first of all they don't rhyme so it's not like he's in there like ham slam ham sham he's not trying to do that there's no rhyming so he's just like you know okay i i was assuming they rhymed in chinese they don't right. rhyme in chinese either. they do not rhyme in chinese are you Instru kidding it's no i'm not kidding instructional verse means it's Explaining something to you in a formal language that kind of has a meter. And there's consonants in there, like Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. There's sounds that are repeated. So he's not just, you know, he's not ignoring the fact that there's a rhythm and there's the same number of syllables per line. But it's not, he's not killing himself about how he needs to rhyme something with lady and the only thing you can come up with is baby. That's it. I mean, there's no. I feel <sighs> woman, woman has gotten me once again. I, I really, I really thought uh, like surely the poems are, are only this bad because they're in English. If I could read in Chinese, I could see <laughs> all of his genius displays. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's said... my. <laughs> He he said uh, he said we're spur of the moment. So you know that's all you get. But I mean I think that's the important part, right? We keep trying. Well, not we. Within Zen culture, there's an emphasis on spur of the moment conversation, right? And act you know answering questions in real time and and being genuinely present without having composed an argument or a thought or anything. So you know. I mean, he's showing off, but also he's doing the thing that the tradition calls for, which is he's just rattling it off as he hears it in his head, right? I think that makes it a lot more interesting 
as well because if we're talking about how uh he's guarding the 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 gate and that the passport he wants to check is you know the the I forgot the word for it. The, ah, the, the the mind seal. Um, then it makes sense that he, uh, he's. I mean, the the meeting is in uh, equal terms as much as it can be, right? Because if he had, you know, worked on this book for twenty five years, and <laughs> you had, we to... would expect more effort <laughs> if he. <laughs> Some of this stuff is not like <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, but what what I mean is, if he had done that, then uh, it's almost like you would have to come in those in in similar terms, right? You would have right. to, sure. um, you 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 wouldn't be able to just come into this book and you know try to pick a fight with him if if uh, even if you don't have I don't know. Uh, uh, PhD in classic Chinese studies or whatever. Xenology. A PhD in Xenology. Wouldn't that be nice? I it's it's also I, I also like the the now that you, you you mentioned it, I also like the the how different these fields of you know he's saying I, Hui Kai, in the summer of the whatever, whatever. And how? <coughs> okay. Present time. Thank you. Um, how how different that that is from um, religious scripture, right? And all of all of these other right types of writing that you know nobody knows who made them. Uh, it was probably made by a bunch of people and modified through the years by different iterations and what different uh, people thought was important. Like, you know, we said that uh, we mentioned the Bible, but also the Lot the Lotus Sutra and uh, a lot of different sutras have uh, things like that, right? Where they, uh, like the first two chapters were composed in a year and then the next 10 chapters were, were, were done by some other guy. And uh, this was done by this one person. You're like, this is not a... Um, well, uh, this is not a uh, holy scripture. This is not a uh, book that was uh, worked by a lot of different hands. I mean, at most, it it a good version of the woman one should be done by at most two people, right? Uh, woman one and the translator, and that's it. Those are the people who are involved, right? And you. Um, so I think I I find that very interesting in in comparison to how a lot of this type of writing works the translator also ends that um second to last paragraph with this interesting way of translating it the whole collection is called women guan and then he has brackets to translate that title which he translates as a double entendre woman's barrier or the barrier of the gate of nothingness so the translator puts the double entendre into the translation, which is super valuable, right? I mean, because people who've never seen this before are going to be like, uh, they won't understand that it's both meanings. It's not one or the other. And I, says, I I have a question. Why is he translating it as as uh, nothingness? Is it because of the nega negation character being, being in there? No gate barrier. Um, the beginning, the preface, right? The first sentence is ends with the gate of nothingness is the gate of truth. So I think um, gate of nothing is both a reference to that um, and um, No gate checkpoint. What, right, when he says his name is no gate, it's what does no gate mean, right? Is it the gate of nothingness? Is it not having a gate? 
what is the so he's resolving that by saying gate of nothingness is woman and then guan is barrier so woman is either his name no gate or it's the type of gate which is wu nothingness men gate nothingness gate Okay, that's uh, uh, yeah. It's not my favorite translation, but okay. So then, th but but he's tying that back to the beginning of the preface, which says "gate of nothingness," and this, of course, all is going to tie back to Bodhidharma, who says, you know, what's the highest of the holy truths? Nothingness or emptiness, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm on board now. Okay, cool. All right. So Cleary's version of the poem is the great path, the gate of nothingness has no gate. Amidst the thousand differences, there is a road. If you can pass through this barrier, you walk alone through heaven and earth. Well, mostly alone. So I, mean, I think, oh, wait, I meant to, meant to mention that in the preceding paragraph, there's the blink of an eye thing. And the blink of an eye thing is important because, again, we're talking about uh, you don't have time to work out a complicated argument. You need to be responding in the moment. And uh, it gets overlooked, but um, one finger Zen is responding in the moment. And you can say, well, you know, it's not a very good response. It's not complicated. It's not sophisticated. And that's okay. I don't think... It has to be complicated or sophisticated, but it has to be immediate and sincere. Um, so at the end of this, I think this is another interesting point. And, and for me, the whole book is just a long warning, right? It's like that tag that you get on the mattress, right? You know, it's just a long warning. And this is this particular part of the warning tends to be ignored by almost everyone. Um, you walk alone through heaven and earth like why would he put that at the beginning of this thing you if you get this if you get this message you'll be alone for the rest of your life like <laughs> how is that a selling point like <laughs> like i have written this in code that no one will ever break but if you break it no one will ever believe you like it's a very odd thing to have in the preface. I mean, the whole book is a miraculously odd creation. It's odd even in terms of Zen records. But, like, why would he do that? And I think that this goes to one of the other differences between Zen and religion and Zen and philosophy. And that is um, you're never going to sit down together with the people in your family and everybody's going to agree mm. that will not occur. And that's the spirit that he's talking about here. If you all go to church together, you have to agree on something. That's why you're there. If you um, have a philosophy, then you're all going to agree on some rules and some premises and there's going to be a chord there. But if you go home for family dinner, there's no rules about people agreeing with anything that anybody says. I mean, it's a family and they're not associated because they agree. So that aloneness, I think, is important to him because it reflects the very nature of the lineage, which is, you know, not accord based. And I think that's uh that's that 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 plays into i mean it, it's not a great verse but i think it has a certain uh, harmony to it because i think that that all that ties into what he says at the start right uh, uh in my version uh it says the great way is gateless yeah. the great way is gateless yet it has a thousand different paths which uh if we put it in that context, it's saying that the great way, I mean, the, 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 the road they're talking about 
is not i mean okay is <laughs> stop it uh the great way I'm struggling to phrase this. Okay. Can you say it in Spanish? Basically, it's, no, it, 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 it's, that's not the issue. Uh, so I just want to hear it in Spanish. The, uh, okay. It's basically saying that there is no thing, road that everyone's going to walk together and be doing the same things and thinking the same things. Uh, ideas and you know uh, I, I don't know living the same lives and I think there is it, it's, a, it's a double like um, a double edged sword because I don't remember if he is going to if woman mentions it as well so maybe I'm getting off topic but at least as far as other Zen masters go, they make a big deal out of how if you are not, if you are off even by a hair's breadth, you are talking about something else. Right? So it's a double edged sword in the sense that the thing that makes it the same family is not agreement. But if, if, if you're not talking about what you're talking about for even a little bit, then it's already over, right? And I think I could say that better, but that's how it's coming out. So, uh, you know, you I pass you the hot potato. How do you say um, gate of nothing in Spanish? Uh, I, I actually did... Uh, uh, translation of this preface and I struggled a lot to come up with a good translation for gate because it's not the same uh, meaning that uh, okay how about how about an entrance the exactly. entrance of nothing yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, la entrada de la nada could be could be one um, because it's not the, the the gate to some uh, to nothingness right it's the gate of nothingness right I think it's both things, right? It's not, it's a uh, woman's name is no gate. That is that no one, um, no one's going to get enlightenment from him. <laughs> so uh, uh, Blythe argued that Yunman's name was gate full, meaning everybody could find a gate in him. Right, he's full of gates, but woman's the opposite. He's a person of no gates at all. If so, woman's name is 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 really having no gates. Right, so this would be the this would be the checkpoint of the person who has no gates, or the checkpoint of the person who has no entrances to offer. And that would mean the book was having no entrances uh, checkpoint the book of the book of no entrances checkpoint. Oh, so bad. I, uh, I think it's really funny because this is the first time that I'm realizing what you were saying about how all of this book is a is a warning because he's basically saying, hey, here's a de dead end. Like, come check it out. It's a dead end. And so it's like, okay, let's let's find out what it is. I mean, I don't know. I see the thing is that dead end is very interesting, right? Because I mean, there are lots of pe 